In this video, we're going to discuss the activation energy and the temperature dependence of reaction rates through the Arrhenius equation. Okay, so our reaction rate, V of T, uh, that can be very temperature dependent depending on the type of reaction that we have. Um, in most cases, our standard chemical reactions, the kinds of, you know, A plus B goes to C plus D, things that we've been talking about for most of this playlist, you'll see some type of dependence like I have here where at low temperatures you have a pretty low reaction rate and then as you get to higher and higher temperatures your reaction rate gets higher and higher and it just keeps getting at a faster and faster rate as your temperature goes up. Um, then there are other types of reactions where maybe you have some type of enzyme catalysis and that enzyme starts functioning at a certain temperature and then the reaction gets faster and faster and then you get to some temperature and you start denaturing the enzyme and then at some temperature the enzyme completely unfolds and your reaction rate just collapses. So that can happen as well, this type of a uh, temperature dependence profile. And then there's other types of equations or of reactions where you have some initial rates occur and then things start happening and then you reach some temperature and you pass uh, a barrier to the reaction becoming explosive and it just happens very very fast then at any temperature higher than that uh, kind of and it messed up the tail there let's see okay all right so those are some kinds of profiles you get the one we're going to look at in this video is just this kind of standard case where it's fairly consistently increasing with temperature all right so what we have is there's an empirical relationship between temperature and reaction rate. So just through experiment, it's been noticed that you typically have this type of relationship, that the derivative of the natural log of your reaction rate with respect to temperature equals some constant called Ea divided by the gas constant times temperature squared. Okay, so this is a constant, this is a constant, so there's kind of an inverse squared dependence on how uh, the logarithm of k changes with respect to t. And it's generally going to be taken as an assumption that Ea is not a function of temperature. We're going to assume that that's just... Uh, that that is the case. That is not always the case, and there are definitely rate or reactions where this Ea, this constant, is dependent on temperature, but we're going to assume for our purposes that it's not going to be. Okay, so if you assume that, then you can integrate this equation and you can get the following uh, formula. You have that the natural log of K is equal to minus Ea over RT. Okay, so now we can take uh, both sides to the power of e. So we have e to the log k is k, and you have e to the minus ea over rt. So what we have is k equals some constant, which we have called capital A, times e to the minus ea over rt. All right, so this whole equation here is called the Arrhenius equation, first noticed by Swedish chemist Svente Arrhenius. So when you discover something, you get it named after you. So that's your incentive to discover something. You can name it after yourself and have a lot of fun with that. And that's the Arrhenius equation in its totality. So marking some terms here, we have the rate constant which as we said has some temperature dependence through this through the Arrhenius equation. We have this value called the pre-exponential factor. Sometimes it's called the Arrhenius factor, but usually it's just called the pre-exponential factor. And then we have our temperature, gas constant, and the last quantity of interest here is this Ea, which is called the activation energy. So what this activation energy is, is you assume you have your, your reactants at some given energy. 
So you have your reactants down here, and then you have what's called a transition state at some higher energy, which is up there. And down at the bottom, you have your products. So you have reactants, you have transition state, you have products, and then this activation energy represents the energy that it takes to get your reactants up to this assumed transition state. So that's kind of what the interact what the activation energy represents. And as you get higher and higher temperatures, you have more and more molecules which are capable of crossing this activation energy barrier. And so your reaction is, is going faster and faster because more molecules have the energy in a shorter time span to cross this activation barrier and then and then get go to products. So your reactant rate, that's why your reaction rate generally is going to be increasing with temperature because more and more molecules have the enough energy to get over this activation energy restriction. So the other thing that this implies about the behavior of chemical reaction rates is that as we saw here through this type of equation, what we have is if you graph the natural log of your rate constant and you graph that versus 1 over temperature, so you have essentially a linear equation here, y equals, and then you have no, you have no intercept, or yeah, you have y equals minus Ea over R times 1 over T. So your slope is this kind of minus Ea over R. So if I define my zero to be up there, then if I have different reaction rates, these are not associated with the colors of the previous graph, but then my slope of my graph here, my slope is going to be equal to minus activation energy divided by gas constant. So if I plot log the logarithm of my rate constant versus the inverse of the temperature, I can get my activation energy, what this value should be, through the slope of this line here. And these would be um, lines with steeper negative slopes here are lines with higher activation energies. So in this case, I have Ea for that, Ea for the yellow, and Ea for the light blue. And that's going to be such that for the purple is greater than the yellow, which is greater than the light blue. So this is um, our Arrhenius equation, which defines how our reaction rates depend on temperature. And that depends on a quantity called the activation energy, which we can get at by plotting the logarithm of the rate constant versus the inverse of the temperature.